This video is brought to you by Nebula. At first glance, the UK looks like one of the most anti-migrant countries in the world. Parliament is currently tussling over a bill that would allow asylum seekers to be preemptively deported to Rwanda. British cabinet ministers decry the failure of multiculturalism and fearmonger about segregated neighbourhoods. The Home Office has become renowned for both its incompetence and the so-called hostile environment policy, a set of administrative measures designed to make staying in the United Kingdom as difficult as possible for anyone without permanent residence in the hope that they voluntarily leave. And, of course, Brexit has been widely interpreted by both the British and European media as an expression of English nativism, motivated by anxieties about migration and freedom of movement. But scratch below the surface, and it becomes clear that the UK isn't quite as insular as it's often made out to be. While British voters are indeed sceptical about the number of asylum seekers arriving via small boats, which is what the Rwanda bill aims to reduce, they're generally far more positive about regular migration than their European counterparts. Suella Braverman had to walk back her multiculturalism comments after they were ridiculed in the British press, not least because Braverman herself, as the daughter of a Mauritian and Kenyan immigrants with Indian roots, embodies a certain definition of British multiculturalism. And while it's of course true that Brexit voters were motivated by anxieties about freedom of movement, they were generally concerned about European migration specifically, and non-EU migration into the UK has actually soared in the past few years, thanks in part to generous and popular schemes for refugees from Hong Kong and Ukraine. According to census data from 2021, roughly one in six people living in England and Wales were born abroad, a larger fraction than America or any large European country except Germany. And this number will only increase as net migration continues to rise. So in this video, we're going to look at why Britain is actually, well, really good at immigration. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start by just taking a look at what the UK actually thinks about immigration. Contrary to the stereotype, Britons actually hold some of the most pro-immigrant views in the developed world. In 2018, YouGov polling found that Brits were more likely than basically any other European country to say that the benefits of immigration outweigh the costs, and more likely to be in favour of both skilled and unskilled immigration. According to analysis by the Financial Times of data from the World Value Survey and the European Value Survey, Britons are more likely than their European or American peers to say that immigrants have had a positive impact on their country more likely to want an immigrant as their neighbour, and more likely to disagree with the idea that employers should prioritise native Brits. The only EU countries to express more pro-immigrant sentiments than the UK on these questions were Sweden and Germany, but this polling was done in the late 2010s, and both countries have since experienced a significant uptick in anti-immigrant sentiment, evidenced by the rise of the AFD and the Sweden Democrats. Conversely, the UK has actually become more pro-immigrant since the 2010s. The number of Brits citing immigration as one of their top political priorities peaked in 2016, despite the fact that net migration is still rising. Similarly, the number of Brits saying that immigrants are good for the economy and the UK more widely has risen dramatically in the past decade. And in 2022, for the first time in recorded history, a majority of Brits say that they either wanted migration to remain the same or increase, again, despite rising net migration. And despite all the panicked talk about small boats, polling by British Future suggests a growing number of Brits want a fair asylum system, even if it means more refugees. Now, there are a couple of caveats worth mentioning. A significant share of Conservative voters still see immigration as a top issue, and young men are significantly less progressive on this issue than young women. Nonetheless, because there aren't that many Conservative voters left, and because these young men are still becoming more pro-immigration, just not at the same rate as their female peers, in the aggregate, Brits are still some of the most migrant-friendly people around. Which is one of the reasons that, at the same time as the anti-immigrant right is on the rise in Europe, Labour is surging in the polls, and the Conservatives' escalating anti-migrant rhetoric has done basically nothing to help them. And it's not just that Brits are positively disposed towards migrants either. Migrants actually do better in the UK than in other places. University-educated migrants in the UK are basically as likely as their British peers to find employment, while those in the EU have an employment rate 10 percentage points lower 
than equivalently well-educated Europeans. Less well-educated immigrants actually have an employment rate 12% higher than their British-born equivalents, and on average, male immigrants actually have a slightly higher employment rate than British-born men. Migrant children also get better grades in the UK than they do in Europe. Kids who don't speak English as the first language actually do better than British kids at GCSE level, and immigrants' children also do better than British kids at PISA tests. The reverse is true in the rest of Europe. In Germany, for instance, immigrants' children scored 436 points in the latest maths test, way below the 495 for native Germans. In the UK, 77% of children from immigrant backgrounds expect to go to university, compared with just 62% of native children. In France and Germany, again, the pattern is reversed. The educational and economic success of British immigrants is in large part down to the fact that the UK is also very good at integrating migrants. According to analysis by Gemma Catney, a geographer at Queen's University in Belfast, literally every ethnic group in England and Wales becomes less segregated and better integrated every time the UK does the census, i.e. every 10 years. Similarly, analysis by the Financial Times found that only a handful of British cities are anywhere near as segregated as American cities like New York. And unlike other countries, the UK's most prosperous region, London, also has one of its largest migrant populations. So why is the UK so good at immigration? Well, when it comes to integration, it probably helps that English is the world's most common second language. But it's also perhaps because, and we don't have time to go into it in too much detail, while most of Europe saw immigrants as an economic stopgap for post-war labour shortages, in the late 19th and early 20th century, the British political establishment saw immigration as a means for maintaining imperial influence, and so-called British subjects were allowed to come and live permanently in the UK until really the 60s, which means the UK has a longer history of permanent migration, than most of its European peers. That's not the end of this story either, so if you want to dive deeper into this and other stories, we have an exciting announcement. That's because it was revealed, in Variety no less, that we're building a new product with our partners at Nebula, called Nebula News. Let me explain this exciting announcement. In an increasingly polarised and confusing world, it's hard to find news that matters and that you can trust. So every day, the TLDR team curates a selection of videos that matter most in the world right now, handpicking a feed of content which should keep you up to date with everything you need. That means no more overwhelming feeds of news coverage, and instead just the stories that matter most. Videos produced by the brilliant creators on Nebula and curated by the TLDR team. It's truly the easiest way for you to keep on top of the news that matters to impress at your next wedding, dinner party, or whatever your life entails. It's not just curated news content brought to you directly by us. Nebula also features exclusive original content. That's things like Real Life Law's brand new series War Room, which every month runs you through a whole load of ongoing conflicts, keeping you in the loop. You can also watch every TLDR video on Nebula ad-free, and in many instances, before they land on YouTube. Now, if you're already subscribed to Nebula, you can find the brand new Nebula news section at nebula.tv forward slash news, and be sure to bookmark or save that link so you can use it as your TLDRified news homepage. If you're not a member already, then click the link in the description to sign up now. If you do, you'll get 40% off an annual plan by using our link. That's less than £2 a month. Plus, Nebula will know that you came from us, which really helps us out. Thanks for your support, especially when we're doing something so big and new. And we hope you love Nebula News.